Now at five, after another night of violence in North Portland, including a riot and arson, a prominent local black leader makes a proposal that he hopes will calm things down. Downtown at the federal courthouse, federal police reacted after protesters started barricading the doors to the courthouse. What the president and the mayor have to say about that today. And the weather is warm, the water inviting, but with no local pools open, the danger is increased both in the water and on the shore. Our experts have reminders on how to keep everyone safe. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris. We begin with reaction to another night of violence in our city. Today, the president of the Portland Police Union was joined by community leaders, once again calling for an end to the violence. This is no longer about George Floyd. This is no longer ra about racial equity or social justice. This is no longer about reform or the evolution of policing. This is about violence, rioting, destruction, chaos, anarchy. Buildings on fire, dumpsters on fire, broken glass and damaged businesses in Old Town, the Pearl, Northeast and North Portland. Our city is under siege by rioters. Residents and visitors are avoiding the downtown core area for fear of getting caught up in the violence. Portland, it is time to stand up. We want to work with you and we ask for a moratorium, literally a moratorium on the streets to give us an opportunity hearing you because we want you to know that we hear you. The Portland Police Association was damaged last night. These are pictures from there set on fire by protesters. North Portland did see some of the most violent clashes last night. Seven people were, were arrested, some officers injured. Galen Etlin walks us through the events of last night. In North Portland Saturday night, demonstrators gathered at Peninsula Park, then walked to the Portland Police North Precinct. Police say demonstrators damaged some patrol cars and heckled officers arriving to work. After being told to leave, the crowd moved down to the Portland Police Association headquarters on North Lombard, which appeared boarded up Sunday. That's because Saturday night, the night before, police declared a riot as people broke into the union headquarters and set a fire inside. Officers got the fire out themselves. Portland police said they did not use tear gas despite declaring a riot. The crowd scattered into the neighborhood, throwing rocks and paint balloons at officers. Some officers were hurt. Federal officers had a different approach downtown. Demonstrators again removed the fencing at Lounsdale and Chapman Squares, trying to barricade the federal courthouse. Federal officers again used tear gas to disperse the crowd. They're not needed here, they're not wanted here, and we want them to leave. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler has exchanged blows with President Donald Trump on the national stage. This is being coordinated from the White House. It's being done to bolster the president's failing campaign. The president responding indirectly on Twitter Sunday, saying, quote, We are trying to help Portland, not hurt it. Their leadership has, for months, lost control of the anarchists and agitators. They are missing in action. We must protect federal property and our people. These were not merely protesters. These are the real deal. In Portland, I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. Moving on now to the other huge story in our area, the coronavirus pandemic. The news is not good for Oregon. The Oregon Health Authority reported today 436 new cases. That is a big number, just one off the daily record, which has set just three days ago. Things are moving in the wrong direction. More than 14,500 cases have now been reported in our state. The OHA said three more people have died as well, raising the state's death toll to 260. The majority of new cases we saw today are out of Multnomah County, 123. Take a look at the graph there. You can see that it's a new daily record for the county as well. Well, the sun is shining and the temperatures are up. Most public schools, though, or public pools are closed. That means a lot of people are heading right out here to the local rivers and lakes. As Tim Gordon reports, with COVID-19, you still have to be careful on the beach. Full sun above makes for full parking lots at places like Broughton Beach in Northeast Portland. By midday, the shoreline along the Columbia was already filling up. And while most groups seem to set up six feet apart, the vast majority went maskless. I do have a mask with me. Um, and 
It just used to feel safe outside and it's a little different now. Melissa Jackson has a mask handy that she may put on if the crowding gets too much. Steve Shock left his in the car, but feels okay joining his small group. Because we've been together, so as long as people are six feet away from us, good to go. Although he admits it's hard not to mingle some at the water's edge. Everybody's pleasant, everybody kind of, you know, doing their own thing. Not very many masks out here, but you know, it is what it is. What do you do when you go in the water and in and out of the water? So Remember, the guidelines in Oregon and Washington include wearing a mask, even outdoors, if you can't social distance six feet from others. You know, it's really important to, to keep those masks on when you're out and about, even if you're on the river, or, or really try and isolate yourself to one group so that you're, um, you know, following the guidelines to try and help keep this thing at bay and uh, flatten the curve. American Medical Response's Leah Gordon has more to say about safety once you're in the water. Whether it's paddle boarding on the Willamette, tubing on our colder, swifter rivers, or getting in the water anywhere else you go, it's all about life vests for everyone with an extra focus on the kids. So really important to keep kids in life jackets, um, specifically Coast Guard approved life jackets, and uh, also to keep them within arm's reach. Because especially with rivers, the water can be deceiving. The river is relentless. It will continue to flow. Um, with those wider rivers, uh, definitely the farther out you go, the more you're going to feel that current. So staying safe or staying close in the shore uh, and again, really keeping an eye on kids. So we hope you listen to the advice and warnings in our story because with hot weather coming in over the next few days, beaches like this are certainly going to remain busy. In Northeast Portland, Tim Gordon, KGW News. Because of the pandemic, AMR does not have lifeguards at High Rocks and Glen Auto Park this season. That makes those places even more dangerous. But they are doing a life jacket drive starting tomorrow, and they'll get them to the people who need them, they say. If you can donate, Tim has information on how you can do that in his story at KGW.com. All right, this is a great time to turn to the weather now. And Chris McGinnis, one of our weather gurus, you've been checking out the water temps at some of the swimming spots in our area. How's it looking? Yeah, and this is the time of the year, Pat, where the water temperatures start to come up just a little bit. But mind you, they're still pretty chilly out there. A dip in the water can feel quite refreshing, but some of these water temperatures may shock you a little bit. We'll give you the live look right now over the Rose City Sky Camera and the Willamette River in the background. Let's go ahead and take the graphics I can just show you right now. That's one of the warmer locations in town. The Willamette River in downtown Portland measuring about 71 degrees. And that's, you know, that's tolerable. North of the Bonneville area, Columbia River, that's running about 67. That's a little chillier, of course. And then we start to get into some really chilly water. The Little Sandy near Bull Run at 60. The Clackamas River uh, up above Carter Bridge or in the Three Links area, I should say, at 59 degrees. That is cold water. And if you're not prepared for it, it can certainly take your breath away. So just know that as you venture out uh, into area waterways as the temperatures continue to heat up the next couple of days. Right now, speaking of heat, it's 89 in Vancouver. It's 88 in downtown Portland. And at last check at PDX, Pat, I think we may have hit 90 degrees. So... A hot one today and even hotter weather tomorrow. I've got your full forecast coming up All in right. just a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Does feel like summer indeed.